Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 135. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the LMP Invitational. Um, I'm, what does, oh, Le Mans Prototype. It's, uh, I was going to say, what does LMP stand for? Answered me own question. Um, starting off with Sebring. Road America, Sedona Raceway, then moving on to the old Multisane circuit, Silverstone, and then Mugello. Not looking forward to Silverstone. I'm really hating that track at the moment. Like, with a burning passion. Just hate it. It's a horrible circuit. All right, here we go. We have Fast Vehicle. Fast Vehicle. Nice. <laughs> Uh, this is definitely a diesel. You can tell by the really low rev point. <laughs> 5,000 RPM. These things are fucking quick, though. Do you know one thing I've just realised? Because of the fact that there's the super track days... Which basically has the Nurburgring, um, that Fujimi, Kaido, whatever it is, the Japanese circuit. Which I believe we didn't actually see the Japanese circuit in the last game. I think it was only in Motorball 1. I don't think it was in the last game. Fujimi Kaido, yeah. And also Amalfi Coast, because Amalfi Coast actually has a long version. Um, Nurburgring will be fine. I got no problem with that. Fujimi Kaido ooh, is quite narrow. So, a little bit nervous about that one, especially with R1 vehicles. Like, these things are fast. It's a mouthy coast I'm concerned about because that is so narrow and so short. It's literally just accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake. Constantly. For <laughs> that one, get Eurobeat playlist. Do you know what? I will get a Drift Funk playlist. I'll need to find some Drift Funk songs, but anytime we're on Fujimi Kaido. We will be playing Drift Funk. Every single time. I'll do it. Just for the meme. But you'll have to uh, find me a playlist so that I can import it to Tidal. I think there's actually a Drift Funk playlist on Spotify now. I use Tidal, but I've got an app that allows me to import Spotify playlists into Tidal. Um, it basically just like searches it, tries to compare the album artwork, and sees if the songs are available. was close. That could have been a lot more damage. Oh, 
It does seem like they just didn't get enough time to fully map every single dashboard on every single car. But the funny thing is, like, game development back in the day when, like, this was probably becoming a new thing, having interior cameras, the fact is, they didn't, they were like, okay, right, we're going to make an interior camera for this car. We don't have enough time for development. What can we miss out on? Hmm. We'll make a slightly lower poly count interior. A little less detail. And uh, you know what? We'll not do the dashboard. And look at this. It's a fairly solid looking interior. With a pretty solid looking game. You look at modern games and it's like, hmm, we must have all this stuff. Oh, wait, but our physics engine is terrible. Nah, we must focus on beauty. It's just ridiculous. Like, a lot of game designers are just focusing too much on graphics. Like, I'm playing Forza Motorsport 3 and I have absolutely no problem with this game. Like, if this was to sell today... Granted, I'd probably only pay about £30. It's not really worth any more than that. But I would play this. Yeah. It was definitely a good idea to take this car because if I didn't take it. Oh, yeah. They obviously, and when it comes to racing games, racing games as a whole is a very difficult genre to remaster. Because of the fact it's like licensing and stuff like that. Unless a game is, you know, its own... Th like Need for Speeds. Every time there's a Need for Speed, it's its own thing. It's very rarely something that's like, oh, we've got this Need for Speed, but we've got a newer version of it. So stuff like Hot Pursuit Remastered actually makes sense. Burnout Paradise Remastered makes sense. Forza Motorsport 3 Remastered? Well just play Motorsport 4 or Motorsport 7. Pretty much a similar thing. It's like if they brought back like FIFA 12 and then just said FIFA 12 remastered. Like why would you do that? It wouldn't make any sense and it's I understand why. Like as much as I would love to see this game ported to PC, made remastered along with Motorsport 1, 2 4 Five, six, seven. Some devs did remaster of remaster. What do you mean? Of uh, Need for Speed. Honestly, Hot Pursuit Remastered runs so well on the Steam Deck. It runs at 60 FPS, which blows my mind. Like, that is a quite demanding title. It now doesn't run on the Steam Deck at all, thanks to EA Launcher. Because uh, the EA Launcher has pretty much bricked all games on Steam Deck that require the EA Launcher, because it just doesn't work. Which means I can't play Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Because ev every game that's owned by EA is now being required to be played on... The Hasuit Remaster. What? Do you mean Hot Pursuit? Hot First... <laughs> it keeps... <laughs> oh. That was brilliant. 
Yeah, Hot, Hot Pursuit... Well, Hot Pursuit had its own mobile version. And most one in 2012 felt like the Hot Pursuit mobile version. They felt pretty much the same. I'm pretty sure it was Hot Pursuit that had a mobile version. Or it might have been a different Need for Speed, I'm not 100% sure. But... Need for Speed Hot Pursuit... The 2010 and the remastered one... Awesome games. Awesome games. Yeah, I mean, to be fair... I mean, Criterion did make Hot Pursuit 2010 pretty much like Burnout. That was the bur That's why I never understood why people hated Most Wanted 2012 but loved Hot Pursuit 2010. Because the only difference between the two games are the fact that one allows you to drive as a police officer and as not a police officer. And one's got open world. They're pretty much similar. Similar game. I mean, 2010 had free roam as well, but it wasn't free roam where you could do stuff. It was just, oh, look, here's the map. You can drive anywhere. But you literally could just drive. That was it. There was no races. There was no events. There was no nothing. So, I mean, they were very similar games. Um, the handling model was slightly different, but they were both made by Criterion. Even the run, which was by Blackbox, was also made with Criterion assets from Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. And then when it came to 2013, when Ghost Games became a thing, Criterion pretty much made that game. And Ghost Game sort of added stuff. I, I, I'll be totally honest, right? EA need to stop with this obsession of the Frostbite engine. It is not as versatile as they think it is. Right? The Frostbite engine... Uh, granted, the new Need for Speed looks good. But the Frostbite engine is terrible when it comes to racing games. They need to stop using Frostbite for Need for Speed. Use Ego. Use Codemaster's Ego engine for Need for Speed. But Frostbite should stay to FIFA, to NHL, to the sports games. Because Frostbite works so well with that. It does not work at all for Need for Speed. The Frostbite engine needs to go. It's not an engine built for racing games. Uh, Need for Speed Unbound uses Frostbite. Every Need for Speed since 2013 has used the Frostbite engine. Um, I think that's why Need for Speed 20, like Need for Speed Rivals, looked so bad graphically, was because the Frostbite engine just wasn't at all optimized for racing games. And rather than EA saying mm, we messed up. Yeah, it's not engine of the game. Because Grid Legends uses the Ego engine. Uh, along with any of the Dirt games use the Ego engine. Um, F1 uses the Ego engine. All of Codemasters games uses the Ego engine. Except for Project Cars 3. I believe that was on a different engine that Slightly Mad still had, whatever that engine was. But other than that, everything that Codemasters has ever made has pretty much been on the Ego engine. And honestly, the Ego engine is fucking amazing. There's a reason why Colin McRae Dirt 2 was such a good game. There's a reason why Dirt Rally 2.0 is such a great game. There's a reason why all of these games that Codemasters makes that uses the Ego Engine are so good. Grid Legends, I, in my opinion, I really liked. Um, I'll be totally honest, I understand why people hate it at the same time, but... I understand why... Like, I, I like the game, so, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Um, have you checked what error codes it comes up with? Double checked what the error codes mean. Because if something doesn't launch, there's always an error code. Uh, and if it doesn't launch at all, typically can mean there's a problem with... Hmm. Uh, is that, did you get your game straight through EA or did you do it through Steam? Because if you got it through EA, I don't think EA Launcher actually supports error codes. I've never seen an error code come through EA Launcher. Steam, if a game doesn't launch properly, will say had trouble launching the game or whatnot. Yeah, that might be why then. Um, profile error. Hmm. Have you tried uninstalling the EA launcher and reinstalling it? Because it might be something to do with that. Um, I mean, to be fair, it sounds like something to do with, like, your connection. Oh, shit. It might be something to do with your connection to EA servers. It's fine now. Fair enough. I don't even know what the fuck that was, but we'll go with it. Yeah, fair enough. Result. Yeah, I mean, I'll be totally honest, like, as much as I don't want Codemasters to work on Need for Speed, because I think they're already pretty busy with, like, the new WRC game, the new, uh, like, Formula One games, they're busy with, uh, our Dirt's been cancelled, hasn't it? Unofficial, but Dirt has pretty much been cancelled, I think. It's now just going to be WRC, F1, and a project cars got cancelled as well. What else are they own? Grid. Yeah, so pretty much most of, quite a bit of um, Codemasters intellectual property has been canned. But to be fair, project cars, they canned themselves for making a shit game. Like, I... I kind of expected Codemasters and Project Cars 4 to just be cancelled. Because, let's be honest, Project Cars 3 was so bad. Um, Grid Legends, surprised that didn't get canned before Project Cars, to be fair, but... I'll agree with you on that one. I think I'll agree with you on that one. I would like to see... Um, I mean, Burnout Paradise was the best Burnout game, to be fair. So, they've already kind of done that. I wouldn't mind a Need for Speed 05 remaster. If they did that in 2025, remade the entire game from scratch um, that could be quite nice or a new Need for Speed Most Wanted like along that same line but a new story would be quite cool or Need for Speed Undercover 2 could be quite nice 
Yeah, Undercover I really enjoyed, and I liked the format of Need for Speed Undercover. Burnout 4 or Revenge with newish game and on PC. Fair enough. I don't even know what it is I like about Undercover. Um, because on paper, Undercover is a terrible game, but I, I just enjoy it. It's got this charm. The way that the story is, the way that the heat works, it has this charm. It's quite nice. Ah, oh, this is the last Forza game where there's no active aero. After this, every car has active aero in Forza. Including Horizon 1, surprisingly. That had active aero as well. By the way, I am going to be making it my mission to buy a Bugatti Veyron in every Forza game and driving it. Like, at some point in every Forza game, I have to drive a Bugatti Veyron. It's just a must. Like, it's obviously one of my favourite cars. But, in the next Forza, the Lexus LFA, in Forza Motorsport 4, the LFA exists. So, very much excited for that. Yeah. Undercover is definitely a, a, a weird one. Questionable, but enjoyable. I would like to see... Um, I don't know. I, I'm sort of half hoping that the next Forza game, Forza Motorsport 8, slash Forza Motorsport Reboot, slash Forza Motorsport, whatever they're going to call it, I would love to see it be... It's obviously not going to be a remaster. But to go down a similar road to what Forza Motorsport 4 did. Like a world tour. Something like that. You get terrible cars. Like really slow. I don't want to be given like a Subaru BRZ or anything like that. Because that's not a terrible car. That's a sports car. That's got some power to it. Stuff like that needs to stop. Like, the next Forza game, I want to literally be given a Citroen C1. Or, like, a Citroen Picasso. Something like that. Some fucking absolute ball ache to drive. Yeah, Reliant Robin. Okay, maybe not quite that. But something like that. Go through a World Tour feature and just build up throughout. And as well, if the new Forza game isn't on Steam, I'll be pissed off. You fucking dick. How can you have a Forza game and it not be on PC anymore? Yeah, you slow the fuck down. I'll be honest though, Need for Speed Unbound, um, as much as I was like, wow, we're starting out with an actual decent car, that twist in the story does change it a lot. But, um, 
I'll be honest, the progression in Need for Speed Unbound has been really good. Like, it doesn't feel rushed, it doesn't feel terrible. I mean, I've got eight hours of playtime and I'm s only just got to the end of the trial. Like, there's still stuff for me to do in that game, so... I don't know. Alright, here we go. Next race. I do this one handed. Right. The simp boss is gonna get fucked up. Alright, not bad. Good start so far. Every time I open my mouth, just bonk. Do, 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 do. All right. Holy crap, the way that that gripped around that corner is just unreal. Fucking hell.
Lights, camera, action. I'll keep it moving, you pleb. All right. Can you give me some grip for my shitbox? I will use it on roads covered in ice and snow. Can you make my shitbox magically work? Thank you. Ah, oh, lovely, you fixed my pile of shit car. How nice. I still don't understand why this track and so many other- Like, I understand there was a generational jump between games, but there were so many tracks that got deleted from this game going into Motorsport 5. And the fact is, right, Motorsport 7 has the same amount of tracks pretty much as this game had. But most of the tracks in Motorsport 7 are fucking dog shit. And all of the ones that Forza made of their own, they've kept the dog shit tracks. Like, let's be honest, fucking Maple Valley is terrible compared to a lot of the tracks that are actually offered or have. Alpine Ring from Motorsport 1 was one of my favourite tracks in that game because it actually worked with the handling model and it was actually a cool track. Why the fuck is that just dead? I mean, you can't really say licensing issue when it's their own invention it's like if Gran Turismo didn't have fucking Grand Valley Speedway oh wait it doesn't bastards <laughs> yeah I suppose they just got lazy they were like hmm what track should we put in the next game I know we'll put this test track that was terrible but split it up into lots of little terrible tracks. Oh look, that track that was actually semi-decent in our game? Nah, we'll get rid of that. Like, game developers make the dumbest decisions ever. Honestly. Like, there are obviously games where it's like, oh, they, that was a really good idea, well done. But sometimes developers just make such dumb decisions, it's like... Why? Why is that even a thing? Why have you done that? Why have you not done that? It's very confuzzling. To be fair though, most of the assets that were in Forza Motorsport 2... Most of them were pretty much copied assets from Motorsport 1. There wasn't a lot of um, texture upgrading. It was just because the game was rendered at a higher resolution, it looks better. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. 
I'm now installing Beholder. Nice. It's a really interesting game because, um... It's obviously one of those, like, side-scroller games. Um, but it's got some really weird, like... Stories and shit, and... I don't know. It, it, it piqued my interest, and... For the price that it was, it was worth picking up, giving it a try. Um... I very much found it quite interesting. But I wanted to try out the second game as well. And the second game was like... Well, it was a pound for the bundle. It came with the first one and the second one, but I already had the first one, so... Yeah. Fucking hell, this thing's quick. I don't know, to be honest, because I haven't watched anyone play it. It might be that kind of game that is better watching someone play it than playing it, but I don't know. I haven't watched anyone play it. I just played it. I've done that three times, I think. Maybe twice. I didn't even rewind far enough. You plonker. Go, go, go. Nice. Yeah, it's rewind time. Oh my god, it's been ages since I've heard that. Fucking hell, that was like... Was that 2017 or 2018? Rewind. I want to say it was 2017. Because I think it was before I even started YouTube again. Oh, that's fucking crazy. Oh, I hate you. Oh, it was 2018. Okay, fair enough. I had started YouTube at that point. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.